Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is the gas hob that I use every day in my kitchen. It runs on town gas or North Sea gas, but I have a surplus of butane cylinders that are full, which is slightly different, and there's a few changes I'll need to make. So stepping back and looking down here, the gas comes up in this pipe, and then it has a connector here, which joins it up into the stove over here. And I can isolate it here, and then I can cap off this here so that the gas from the mains pipe can't escape anymore. With it off, it's probably enough, but I'll put a cap on it just to seal the deal. Then what I'm gonna do is drill a hole somewhere like here, out through the wall, cut this pipe and put a pipe straight out through the wall to outside. I might do that as low as possible, so I might do that somewhere like here. But mains gas and butane in a cylinder are at different pressures. Mains gas has a very low pressure. I'm thinking one or two millibars, but I'm not sure if that's right. Someone correct me in the comments. You can probably tell I'm not a gas engineer. But what it means is that the gas in the cylinder is at a higher pressure and so it needs a different type of jet so whenever i bought this cooker many years ago i kept the jets that came with it you can see here it says bottle gas jets for candy gas hob and this is my candy gas hob so i have to take these jets out of this bag and swap them for these jets that are in here if i don't do that the flames will be way too big because the holes in these jets are bigger than the holes in the lpg jets lpg being liquid petroleum gas, which will do for butane, propane, or mixtures of the two as gases like that that come in cylinders from petrol stations and wherever you get butane or propane. So these, these little jets have smaller holes and they let less gas out. This kind of restrict the flow somewhat to get the flame to be the right size. And then at the end, I'll do a couple of safety checks, check for leaks on the pipes, and check that the safety cutoff thermocouples work on the hob at the end, which they work now, so they should work at the end. But that's another easy check to make. So the ideal scenario for me is to be able to put this back to the way it was whenever I run out of butane or stop finding any more. So what I'm gonna do is try and drill the hole, I think, right beside where I can get the connection on here. So if I don't have to cut it and I can just bend it over like that, that would really be ideal for me. So I'll loosen this and see how much flexibility I have to maneuver. Let's turn this gas off. That's it. Before I loosen it, what I'm going to do is just purge any gas up through the line. So this ring on the back here, there's nothing, there's no pressure anymore because I've turned it off. So there might be a little bit of gas coming off here, but it's insignificant. So we've got a elbow here, put that on there, put it like that, just draw a circle around that, and that will show me where to drill. So I've got some plastic pipe and I'm going to use that as a sleeve. I need to cut that to length. Can you shout and tell me when that pipe comes through? Okay. It came through! So this will act as a discontinuity here for this pipe that I'm going to feed through. That pushes out through the wall. And I've got to get this one attached in here. Some PTFE tape on that by the looks of things. Tighten that down. I have to cap off this side here. If I open this now, you can hear the gas coming out. I've got a cap like this and a rubber, especially a rubber washer to go inside. And despite the fact that it doesn't really need a cap, uh, the caps there is an added layer of, se of security or protection. So I'll screw that down and I'll tighten that up now. So the gas main is now open and this is leak detector. It's basically just fizzy water, fizzy water, bubbly water, soapy water. If I don't see any bubbles, there's no issue there really. Just douse it in that stuff and there's no bubbles, so it's okay. So I'll close that gas main because it seems silly to leave it open. 
Now my next job is to go outside and attach the gas bottle to here. So now I'm outside the wall and I'm gonna have to get it connected to a gas bottle. So I need something like this that goes onto a hose, which will then go onto a regulator, which is a thing like this that clips onto the gas bottle. This is a clip-on regulator. I need something that will connect this on here. Now I could just put it like that, but that's a bit naff. So I'm gonna put a, an elbow downwards and have it just hanging like this. And then about, I don't know, a meter or something of pipe on it. So I could afford to take that much off, but I won't take, it won't take quite that much off, but I'll take off about this much here. I could just do it like this and have that as the drop, but I think a bit of, well, I don't know, actually, that's probably plenty. So I think I'll just deal with it as this, as it is here. So let's put that in there and tighten this up. Tighten that up, that pipe's in good and tight. I'll put that one there ready to go. Straight connector. Put that on like that. And then for the gas hose here, I've got this thing and I'm gonna put some tape around that to make a gas tight seal, gas tape, thread seal tape, but I'm gonna use it in this, in this application. How does that look? Obviously, I don't want to cover in the edge like that, cover in the center like that, so I need to have it like that. Let's screw that together. And we'll check for leaks, so if there's a problem, we'll just take it apart and do it again. There's probably somebody cringing at this at the moment, going, you can't do it like that. I think I'm well. This is what I'm doing. So let's put that on there. Tighten this up. That's that. Then a piece of gas hose rated for LPG. A hose clip. Fit that on over it and then wiggle this up and over. that hose clip up and tighten it on. So on the other end of the hose I need to stick one of these, a regulator for the gas, and then I've got the hose clip on already. Push this in, there we go, slide the hose clip on, tighten it down. If you want any information, there it goes, butane. 29 millibars out and then down here is a bottle of gas and there's a lid and it's got the screw thread going the wrong way so when I'm putting this on I have to put it on the wrong way as if I'm loosening it tighten it down and then just give it a twist and that should bring it up enough to keep it on it doesn't need to be infinitely tight you can get a spanner on it if you want tiny little turn more then we can open it now it's on and live. So let's do a gas test inside and then outside. All right, so let's put a bit of a spray on inside. So looking at that, I can't see any bubbles bubbling out. Up there, around the back. You can see the white foam is from the spray, but I can't see any bubbles coming out. Just a drip on the bottom is all. So I'm happy enough with that. Let's do the same out here before we light it up. I won't say this is foolproof, but it's obvious if it's blowing bubbles, you'll see bubbles coming out and getting bigger and then popping. And it might be slow, but you'll see something. Right now, I can't see any bubbles on this. So it's good to me. So then let's take a look at these jets and they should all have a number imprinted on the side of them. So that one's 50. That looks like 65. That also looks like 65. And this one looks like 85. 
So on this hob we have four burners, little one, big one, and two of the same intermediate sizes at the back. The one with the smallest number will go at the front, the biggest number will go at the front left, and the two of the same number will go here and here. Simple enough. So let's take out the old ones. This is a nut driver, 7 mil. so that's the right size for these. Take off the cover and then just unscrew them. Getting them out is a trick because they're really small. That's the old one there. So I'll put the one with the smallest number in here and it's you can see the difference in the whole sizes. They're quite a quite a difference there to allow for those different pressures. So what I try to do is get that in there, hold it in, drop it in position, and then thread it in carefully and make sure it's not cross-threaded. So the same on the back. Let's compare them again. You can see the difference. This one has a little cup on the top, but also the hole is way bigger in the bottom. And so what seems to work is if I put the new jet into my nut driver and then just hold it with the tip of my finger. If this is all dirty, full of sauce and stuff, you need to clean it out, really. That's your call. And there's the last ones. And you can see there is a real difference there between the two hole sizes, jet sizes. This one I could probably screw it in by hand to begin it. There we go. Just screw them in until they're good and tight. What does that mean? There's probably a torque setting. I don't know what it is. Set those back on. Okay, I can hear gas blowing through. There it is. It's lit. Let's leave it on. Light the other ones. There is the little one on. Back ones. Okay, and the last thing to check is the fail safes. So I'll turn all of these off. And we should hear four clunks in a few seconds, or kind of a click or a clunk noise. We just have to wait for that. One, two, three, four. That's it. So that's the fail safes. That's these little thermocouples here that stick up outside the gas ring. They get hot when they're in the flame, and that leaves the gas jet on when you release the pressure off off this button. Some older cookers, like really, really old ones, won't have that. And if you just leave it on, the gas will keep coming out. With these, the gas has to be burning when it's coming out. Otherwise, it'll turn off automatically. And we were just checking the operation that it is turning off automatically. Questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.